38, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Responsibly. Responsibly. 53. Pray for me. Responsive reading, selection number 53. Will of God. reading from the Old Testament side. Teach me, O Lord, to follow your decrees. Then I will keep them to the end. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on level ground. Though he stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. There is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to death. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Together, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Praise God for the will of God. Congregational hymn, hymn number 303, no, not one. Hymn number 303. Thank you.
We have something else going on for his birthday. And what is that? What is that? So you make sure you get your monies in for the cruise. We're going to cap it off. So make sure you get your monies in. So God be the glory at this time. It's offering time. It's offering time, my sisters and brothers. It's time for time. It's offering. Give God some praise. Come on, but you have not truly given until you gave out of your pocket. Let's give what you can. Amen. Y'all give yeah. Sister Quisha a round of applause. We definitely thank God for her. Come on, come on, man, Sister. We thank God for her and her her energy. Uh, right before the usher made ready to receive our offer, um, she she was a little out of order. On the second Sunday, we'll celebrate our deacon deaconess's anniversary. I know you get like me now. Uh, and then on the fourth Sunday, we'll celebrate family and friend. So we have a lot going on next month. We have a lot going on next month. And we want to make sure that we are here to support our church. Is that all right? I need you guys to help me, Macedonia. I need you to help me. I need you to help me reach a goal today. Outside of our time and offering that will be received, I want you to, and the ushers are going to come, can come now. We you won't be able to march today because I want to do it in this manner. Uh, they're going to receive our offering today. Time and offering. And what I want you to do, when we receive our offering, I, I want to do another special offering today. Y'all listening to me? Because one of our members needs our help. Okay? And we want to help in the best way we can. Now my goal is to reach at least $1,000 outside of our offering. It's not many times that Pastor Baby asks for our offering. But if I'm asking, that must mean I really need it. I've already uh, given my portion. I'm going to give more. I ain't going to tell you what I gave because then y'all will be trying to count. <laughs> but I want to give more to the cause today. So our ushers are going to receive our offering. You can receive it right now. And when y'all finish, come back and leave them basket. And, and Deacon Douglas is going to receive our special offering today. I like to hear music. Yeah. I ain't quite. It's okay if y'all don't sing. Y'all, y'all want to sing for all them? All right, they want to sing. If they, as soon as they finish, um, Tracy Collier. Tracy Collier is going to help me and Douglas receive our second offer. Please don't take away from your tithes and offering. Uh, we talked about first fruits on this morning. This is one of those first fruits I need today. If you can help. Tracy, Brother Carly, open the door. When they receive the offering, I want you to come back to your need Douglas and collect our special offering today. And then we'll proceed with Sister Wallace downstairs, okay? Make sure you tell Carol we don't count them without general offer today. That's our special plan. We 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 if you see benevolent on your envelope, benevolent will cover something like what I'm asking for today. Now oftentimes we look at benevolent and we really don't know what it is, but that's what helps the members of Macedonia. And watch this, members of Macedonia. If you know you ain't gave in your time for the year, please, please, please don't put a burden on Pastor Bailey to ask the church for assistance if you know you don't give to the Macedonia in any type of way. Your time, your talent, your resources. You only come when you need something. It's a burden for me. It's a burden for me to to appeal for an offering when you don't do anything for Macedonia or, or the people. Am I making sense? 
All right, all right, all right. So, so we just hope hold that bucket, take one of those buckets, two of those buckets, pour it into the other bucket, and pour that, give that bucket to Deacon Douglas. Deacon Douglas will take the empty one, but the car will take the empty one. You stay right there, Usher. Stay right there. Get, get Sister Paulette and be that other pan that's empty. All right, now let's receive our special offering. Our deacons will receive our special offering. And then we'll pray together. That way we won't mix it up. Paulette, you hold that. Um, you hold those. That's tithes and offering. Don't let nobody take it from you until you go downstairs.
16, when you have to stand for a reading of God's word, book of Daniel, very familiar chapter. Daniel chapter 3, verse 16. When you have a say amen. If you're still looking for Daniel, and you thought I said dairy, I said, Lord, help me. All right, thank you, God. It says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your God, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury and the, ex the expression on his face changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat up the furnace seven times, more than they usually would heat. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning fire furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. The king Nebuchadnezzar was astonished. And he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king, look, he answered, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the form of the four is like the Son of God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Today, if you would allow me to use and preach from this topic, your miracle is in the fire. My God, come on. What do you say? What do you say? Your miracle is in the fire. Look, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. I think the preacher said, your miracles in the fire. Look at your other neighbor, wake that neighbor up. Look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, I know the preacher said, your miracles in the fire. Sometimes, even though you eat healthy, Drink eight glasses of water every day. And Carol Harris, you, you stay away from things that are bad for your body. You stop going to McDonald's and you try to stop drinking Pepsi. Y'all got quiet. Man. Exercise a few times a week. You put your seatbelt on. When you drive, you pray before you drive, pray after you drive, 
And if you ride with my kids, you pray that you make it to your destination. When they drive. You believe in the Bible. The truth is that despite all of your efforts, sometimes things still go wrong. Can I preach today? No matter how hard you try to prevent it, things still go wrong. You can face challenging situations. Your father can get cancer, your mother can get sick, your marriage can fall apart, your children can rebel, you can lose your job, you can lose your house, lose a loved one. And the list goes on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But do you know that you serve a good God? Oh, it can bring you through the difficult circumstances you face. The three Hebrew boys lived upright lives and things still didn't go so well for them. Yeah, yeah. We are not exempt. From going through trials because we serve God. You're not exempt from going through trials because you pay your tithes every week. You come to Sunday school. You're on the usher board. You sing in the choir. You preach in the pulpit. You're not exempt from trials. Can I preach? Don't think that because things go off track in your life, you must have done something wrong. Especially when you've been obedient to God and His Word. The three Hebrew boys were faithful to God and they encountered evil. Instead of submitting to the ungodliness like everyone else around them, they did not give in. They challenged their situation. They didn't let their situation control them, but they control their situation. Why is that, Pastor Bailey? I'm glad you asked because they trusted in God. Nothing separated them from God's love and protection. Are you challenging your situation today, Macedonia? Or are you just living a defeated life? Are you letting the waves of life and currents of life just take you down? Are you just coasting through life like an abandoned boat in the ocean being tossed back and forth without a destination? You need to take control of your situation and take control of your life today. Can I preach today? Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes things seem bad. And then they get even worse, but don't give up and don't let it weigh you down. You'll find hope in the story of the three Hebrew boys. Yeah, Shaq, Rack, me, Shaq, and somebody said in a bad, y'all ain't gonna talk back to me. They said it, I didn't say it. They found a miracle in the fire. Does anybody need a miracle in the fire today? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, King, King Nephew, Canelo, the king of Babylon, took control of Jerusalem and took some of its best citizens captive. Yeah. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were some of the best people who ended up being deported to Babylon. Right. They excelled in knowledge and wisdom and they found favor in the king, Nephew, Canelo. Because Daniel was the only man capable of interpreting one of King Nebuchadnezzar's troubling dreams, he was placed in a high position yeah. over the whole province of Babylon, including all of the wise men. At Daniel's request, the King Nebuchadnezzar appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego as administrators under Daniel. They were just as faithful to God as they were to Daniel. 
Y'all will catch that on the way home. Then you got a promotion, and he reached out to some of his friends. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Daniel hooked his friends up. Yes, yes, yes. He hooked right and Meshach and Abednego up with jobs as administrators and managers. Can I preach today? Yes, sir. But watch this. Watch this. Watch this. And I know how some of y'all think it. They were qualified and skilled to do the work. So this made it easy for Daniel to bring them in. You're not going to bring somebody in, especially to your job, when they pay you every week, if not every week, every two weeks. Uh, you're not going to bring anybody in who's going to cause you to lose your job. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to talk back to me. You're not going to bring your cousin in them in and you know they ain't got no ethics, ain't got no skill. You know they got fired from stealing pins from the last job. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me. And if, if they work at McDonald's, too many Mac chickens. Y'all ain't going to talk You're not going to do that. And if you do, you're going to find yourself having a big headache and cause you unnecessary wrong. I remember, I remember when I started in the school system, I, they gave me a little promotion and I was able to hire people. And the first thing I did wrong, I hired a church club that I knew. Y'all ain't gonna talk back. Y'all ain't gonna talk back. And, and the only reason I hired them because they beg, beg, can you get me on, can you get me out? Listen, you get in the county, we're going to take care of you, but you got to do something to me. And I would get so many calls daily, if you don't come get this person from out of here, I'd say, Lord, if I live to see another day, I'll never hire church folk again. I'm going to talk back to you. I mean, I would set them up in good location and put them in places. All they had to do was just hit the time card. Do you know uh, uh, Harvard, they couldn't even do that, right? All they had to do was get to work and go to sleep afterwards. They couldn't even get to work. You got to be careful who you bring on. Who you should. They'll mess your name up. So from the text, from the text, from the text, we know that King Nebuchadnezzar built a huge golden image and commanded that all the people in his kingdom to fall down and worship this image. When they heard his special music playing, they were to bow down. If anyone failed to bow down and worship the image, they had to be thrown in a blazing furnace. Now this furnace was not like an easy bake oven. It wasn't a small oven in the kitchen that you know only go to 400. And then if it get 400, it's only because it's brand new. Y'all ain't talking to me. <laughs> it, it was, it was, it was. A big chamber used to melt minerals, big bricks for construction. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were determined to worship the one true God. Only so they disobeyed King's command. They could turn their backs on God, not even to have the highest position. Y'all to catch that later. They didn't sell out. They refused to worship the golden image. Say it, say it, say it. They didn't care about their uh, losing their big time jobs and their benefits that came along with it. They stayed loyal to God. Nowadays, people are worshiping other gods. And these gods are not like statues. A god is something you are putting before God. People put their loved ones before God. Their jobs, their money, their hobbies, and all kinds of things before God. Anything that takes priority in your life over God is like you serving another God. 
Y ahora es cuál. You got to do an inventory and check yourself to see if you are putting anything before God. I want to be clear today, Macedonia. Y'all know how much I love my dog. Y'all know I love them. Y'all know I love them. But you can't tell nobody that I'm going to leave church to go watch the dolphins play at 12 or 1 o'clock. I may record it, but I ain't leaving church and I ain't not coming to church to go tell me as much as I love them God see it. And then Roger Woods, y'all ain't talk to me. You can't allow anything to come before God. Don't, don't, don't allow it. I love my motorcycle. Love to ride it. But motorcycle riders only ride on Sunday morning for some reason. So I never get to ride with my crew. Because I ain't going to let no Harley Davidson get in between me and my relationship with God. Harley Davidson didn't wake me up this morning. Harley Davidson don't put food on the tent. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking about it. It may have took some food on the tent. But the Lord woke me up. Yeah, yeah, I ain't going to let it. You ought to be the same way. You, you can't let your car washing on Sunday get in the way of you coming to church. I gotta watch my Mercedes for the night. We gotta hang out. We gotta hang out tonight. No! Don't let it get in your way. No, no. The Hebrew boys were fully confident. I gotta go, y'all. Y'all look at me funny now. They, they were fully confident in God. And nothing could make them bow down to King Nebuchadnezzar's statue. No threats to make them bow down. No consequences to make them bow down. No punishment could make them bow down. Uh, no post on Facebook would make them bow down. Y'all gonna talk to me. Their friends could make them bow down. Their cousin them could make them bow down. The thought of the heat alone would have made most of us in here go ahead and say, you know what, I think we need to come to a conclusion to bow down. Y'all know how we do. But the three Hebrew boys were fully confident in the promises of God. And they were determined to be obedient to God. They, they told the king, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand. In other words, God, they said, do what you want to do because we ain't serving your God. Is there anybody in here can testify today that can stand up to the devil and say, come what may, I'm going to say the Lord. Throw whatever you want to throw at me. Talk about me. Lie on me. Scandalize my name. Steal from me. I'm going to say Sister Will Cox in life push you too hard. You have the same mindset as Shaq, Rad, Meshach, and the big girl. You gotta have, gotta have it. You have to have an attitude that you are fully persuaded that God will bring you through. But even if He doesn't, you'll still serve Him. God can rescue me from cancer, but even if He doesn't, I will not bow. God can restore my marriage, but even if He doesn't, I will not bow. He can even, even, God will increase my finances, but even if He doesn't, I, I wish I had some church in here. God can give me another job, but even if He doesn't, I will not. God can make my kids do right, but on and on. Even if He doesn't, I will not bow down. Can I help somebody? I'm convinced that God will, and He's able to do what He said He'll do. In the midst of what I'm going through, God will show up. 
you got to hold on to God. Unchanging hand. No trial, no tribulation, no suffering, no famine. Nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Even the craziness that's going on in the world and going on in Florida, nothing will separate me from the love. Romans the 8th chapter 38 verse says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate me from the love of God. Look, look at your neighbor and tell them nothing will separate me. Nothing, nothing, nothing will separate me from God's love. When King Nebuchadnezzar heard about the defiance, he did not back down. Yeah, yeah. He made the furnace seven times hot. He turned up the pressure and made things get harder for them. And things may be eating up in your life right now. You may be feeling the pressure light of life like never before. But I come to tell you, Macedonia, that God is right there in the midst. When you make up your mind to serve God, that's when you feel the heat or the pressure sometimes. It seems like the fire in your life is turned up seven times higher. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and a minute ago, you may be facing a fire today, right now. And even though you prayed, the fire is still there. Amen. Moses had to be, had to press his way through the woman with the issue of blood. He had to press her way through. Job had to press his, his way through. And some of you still facing that same issue. And it won't go away. The devil wants you to break under pressure. He wants you to throw in the towel. But I came to tell you, don't give up. But press your way through. Listen, I'm pressing my way through. And I'm going to keep trusting God. Does anybody feel like that today? I know that God will never leave me. No will he forsake me. Watch this, watch this. God didn't save the three Hebrew boys from going into the fire, but he brought them through it. God may not save you from the fire, but he will bring you through it. When you walk through the fire of life, you will not be burned because God will keep you. When you walk through high blood pressure, sugar diabetes, cancer, sickness, Divorce, relationship issues, financial trouble, pressures on your job, whatever your party is today, you will not be burned. If you believe in the promises of God, you will not be destroyed by the fire. You thought your miracle would happen outside of the fire. You thought God would save you before things got that far. But some of us, uh, the miracle is in the fire. Yes. Sometimes you have to walk through the fire like never before. Yes. Just to get your breakthrough. Yes. The three Hebrew boys had their miracle inside the fire. Yes. You should be expecting a miracle while you're going through. Can I preach today? Somebody's walking through the fire now. And God is keeping you. He's performing miracles while you're going through. You don't even see it yet. Don't focus so much on the bad and what isn't going right. But look at the good that God is doing in your life today. And somebody said, well, I don't have what I, I thought I should have. Well, you woke up this morning. I, I want to declare today... Uh, and say starting today 
I'm going to change the way I see things. I'm going to focus and on the positive things and not the negative things. As a matter of fact, for some of y'all church folk, you got to focus on the positive people and not the, y'all got quiet, the negative. When King Nebuchadnezzar threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fire, guess what? Their chain broke. And the God of Israel walked with them through the fire. The king couldn't keep them in bondage any longer. God broke their chains and he protected them. I declare today that your chains are broken and you're no longer y'all let me catch that. Your chains are broken and you're no longer in bondage. The chains are all in all. Satan has used your situation long enough to keep you bound. But I came to tell you, Macedonia, you're free today because Jesus walks with you. Whatever your trouble or trial may be, Jesus will reveal himself in the midst of your trials. You, you may wonder how you made it this far in the fire. It's because Jesus has been walking with you the whole time you were going through. You didn't trust in yourself or man, but you trusted in God. And can I tell you that he will still walk with you today. I know, I know you look back over your life and you say, how did I make it through all of the things I've been through? How in the world as a single mom I raised my kids? How did I keep a job? And how did you didn't do it by yourself? What I 
got your children back. You got your job back. You got your finances back. And for some of us, we got our mind back. You got your happiness back. You got your joy back. You got your strength back. You got your peace back. You stay faithful to God. You have been restored. Uh, do me one favor as I get ready to leave. Uh, look at your neighbor and uh, tell your neighbor, look at me now. Look at me now. Look at me now. Look at me now. Look, look at me now. Look, look at me now. I don't look like what I've been through. I, I don't even act like what I've been when, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. Not only did they come out in one piece, but they came out with a promotion. Because they refused to serve any other God. They were blessed. And King Nebuchadnezzar, he saw the goodness and the favor of God on their lives. And he promoted them in his kingdom. The fire was a test. And there was a promotion on the other side waiting for them. And I want you to know, Macedonia, today, that there's a promotion waiting for you today. If you think not, there's a blessing on the other side. Don't you get up. Don't you get me in. I know you've been going through. I know you're tired of being sick and tired. But you got to keep the faith. You went through some challenging things in your life. But you made it through. You can just hold on a little while longer. God will. He'll deliver you. The Bible says those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up wings like an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You may feel like there is no hope today, but I came to tell you that there's miracles. There's miracles in your fire. Whatever
But now, thus says the Lord, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burnt, nor shall the flame start. Anybody ready to walk through the fire with the Lord? Help me close this up. We're talking about a miracle. It's a miracle in my faith now here. A month or so ago, I was diagnosed with a mass on my liver. And the first thing I said, well, I don't drink. I didn't drink. I just want y'all to know that God is real. I know. I know. I went to the doctor. I had to have an MRI. And it wasn't that I didn't believe, but I'm human. Yeah. I was scared. Yeah. But I knew God was going to heal me, but I was scared. It's all right, it's all right, baby. That's a good God, awesome God. So the spot that they said was there was just like a vein in my leg. It's not there. I asked, I asked the doctor, I asked the doctor, I said, well, is it normal to have a vein in your liver? Oh, oh he said, even now and then it is. He said, but guess what? It's not going to bother you. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. That's the thing that's me about having trust and faith in God. Come, come now, come while you have time. You said the thing you hit my voice. 
Then God, look upon the pastor right now, God. Have mercy upon him right now, God. Continue to lift him up right now, God. Continue to lift this family up right now. Continue to guard the God, oh God. Continue to hold them in the power of your hand, oh God. And when it's all is said and done, dear Heavenly Father, when it's all said and done, dear Heavenly Father, give us a home, Lord. Give us a home, Lord. Give us a home, Lord, somewhere, somewhere in your kingdom, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. We all say amen. Amen. And amen. Hug your brother. Hug your Let them know that you love them. Let them know, oh God. Say amen. amen. 